from a massive ship carrying 4,300 cars capsizing only 23 minutes after leaving port, and a nuclear test in the Pacific Ocean that ended up going horribly wrong, to a chemical factory in Nevada exploding after a fire broke out, and an oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico experts call the worst environmental disaster of all time. Here are 10 of the most expensive mistakes in all history. St. Simon's Sound is an inlet off the southeast coast of Georgia. It plays a major role in maritime trade, as massive tankers leave the port of Brunswick in Georgia en route to their final destination. Unfortunately for the MV Golden Ray, they only made it about 20 minutes away from the port. The Golden Ray was a 660-foot car carrier built in the Hyundai Dockyard in South Korea. She was 116 feet wide and measured at 71,000 gross tons. She could carry up to 7,400 cars across the globe and moved at about 22 miles per hour thanks to a single diesel engine and 24 fuel tanks carrying 300,000 gallons of fuel. On September 8th of 2019, the Golden Ray left the Port of Brunswick en route to the Port of Baltimore. From there, it planned on carrying 4,300 cars to the Middle East. She left Georgia around midnight, but capsized 23 minutes later. The vessel began to list, a nautical term for lean, and never recovered. Since St. Simon's Sound is only 32 feet deep, the ship's side likely got stuck on the seabed. Thankfully, all 23 crew members and the captain made it out okay, but the Coast Guard still had to save four of them after the accident. The capsize sparked environmental concerns, as the ship's fuel tanks were full when it got stuck in the sound. That and the 4,300 cars on board were full of diesel, gas, and antifreeze. Crews began pumping the fuel out by the end of September, but were only able to empty two tanks. Now all they had to do was get the ship unstuck, which proved impossible. Extensive fire and water damage rendered the ship a total loss, an $80 million loss, not to mention the cost of salvage itself. It took until September 26th of 2021 to remove the entire ship after cutting it into six sections. They also recovered almost 20,000 pounds of debris from the area. In total, it is estimated the salvage operation has cost somewhere in the neighborhood of $840 million. According to the final report, the Golden Ray capsized due to several factors, including incorrect numbers entered into the ship's stability calculation. In other words, someone didn't check their math. Behind Las Vegas, Henderson, Nevada is the second largest city in the state. They used to be known for their high supply of magnesium during World War II, but a massive chemical fire in 1988 put Henderson on the map for a much more expensive reason. Enter Pacific Engineering and Production Company of Nevada, also known as Pepcon, and their massive chemical plant located 10 miles south of Las Vegas. At the time, they were one of two American companies producing ammonium perchlorate, or AP, a chemical used in rocket boosters, the same kind used on the space shuttle. On May 4th of 1988, a fire broke out at the factory and ultimately ended up generating a massive explosion. A cameraman stationed a safe distance away captured the moment of the blast. Oh! Ooh, that's gonna be loud! A few minutes later, a second explosion sends another shockwave across the ground. This one, however, was a bit bigger than the last. Both explosions erased the Pepcon plant and a marshmallow manufacturing facility off the face of the earth. It destroyed cars, downed power lines, and damaged other buildings within a one and a half mile radius. 
Sadly, two people lost their lives in the disaster, and over 300 others got hurt. Thankfully, nobody seen in this recording was hurt in any way. In total, the fire caused over $100 million in damages, all because a rogue spark from a blowtorch lit some fiberglass on fire. Surfside, Florida is a small town of about 5,600 people located in Miami-Dade County. They're a residential beach community sporting several multi-story condominiums next to Surfside Beach. Unless you lived or vacationed there, you'd probably never heard of Surfside, Florida until June 24th of 2021. Just when the 2020s couldn't get any worse, everyone's heart skipped a collective beat when one of the Surfside condominium complexes, Champlain Towers South, collapsed unexpectedly. Champlain Towers South was built in 1981 as the first building in a three-tower condominium complex. North Tower went up in 82, and East Tower went up in 94. All three were L-shaped, 12-story buildings. But the South Tower contained the most units, with 136 condos and a penthouse suite on the roof. At 1.14 a.m., while most of the residents slept, the pool deck on the South Tower collapsed, followed by the entire western wing eight minutes later. Sadly, 98 people lost their lives in the collapse, but rescue workers pulled 126 others from the rubble. The New York Times reported flawed designs in the building's construction plans that may have caused the collapse. Meanwhile, the Miami Herald blamed standing water, cracking concrete, and corroded rebar in the building's pool equipment room. Several other sources point towards corruption during the building process. A year after the collapse, Judge Michael Hansman approved a $1.02 billion settlement for the families of lost loved ones and those injured in the catastrophe. When we think of nuclear disasters, Chernobyl and Fukushima are the first that come to mind. But in 1979, a nuclear reactor in Pennsylvania decided to have a meltdown before it was cool to have a nuclear meltdown. It was called the Three Mile Island Nuclear Generating Station, built in Londonderry Township, Pennsylvania. The tiny town of only a few thousand people sits along the Susquehanna River. Three Mile Island is, in fact, a three-mile island in the middle of the river. And on that island, they built a three-reactor nuclear power plant in 1968. The plant opened in 1978, after the second of three reactors came online to produce electricity. Around 4 a.m. on March 28th of 1979, a mechanical failure triggered a chain reaction, leading to the partial meltdown of Reactor 2. The water pumps that were supposed to cool the reactor malfunctioned, and inefficient design plans caused complete chaos. Apparently, they used the same alarm sounds for several different emergency situations. Radioactive gases escaped into the community, and a massive steam geyser erupted through the top of the plant. Thankfully, nobody got hurt in the disaster, and doctors have never linked any health issues to the accident. The cleanup took 12 years and cost over a billion dollars, or two billion dollars as of 2022. Coincidentally, a Jane Fonda film called The China Syndrome came out two weeks before the Three Mile Island meltdown. It was about a fictional meltdown outside of Los Angeles. The nuclear industry at the time dismissed the film as far-fetched. As of January of 2018, over 500 people from 37 countries have gone to space. Most are American and Russian, followed by a handful of Chinese and a few batches from other countries. But space travel isn't easy, and sometimes it's not safe. Most people default to the Challenger disaster of 1986, when the space shuttle exploded shortly after takeoff. But there was another incident in 2003 that proved just as deadly. The Space Shuttle Columbia was returning to Earth on February 1st of 2003, with seven crew members on board. However, it disintegrated when it re-entered the atmosphere, exploding in a massive fireball. An investigative board found that a large chunk of insulating foam fell off the external tank and hit the left wing shortly after the Columbia launched. Apparently, this wasn't the first time this happened either. According to NASA, the foam had fallen off during previous missions, resulting in minor to potentially catastrophic damage. 
They knew this was an issue and came under heavy scrutiny for ignoring it. When Columbia re-entered the atmosphere after 16 days in space, the wing damage allowed hot gases to breach the heat shield, destroying the internal wing structure. The space shuttle became unstable and eventually broke apart. According to the LA Times, the investigation and cleanup cost the government $400 million. The destroyed shuttle itself cost $2 billion. Later that day, President Bush appeared on TV saying, This day has brought terrible news. Mission Control in Houston lost contact with our space shuttle Columbia. The shuttle is lost. There are no survivors. The port of Beirut is one of the largest, busiest ports in the eastern Mediterranean. It sat on the eastern bank of St. George Bay in Lebanon and was responsible for 60% of the country's imports. But that all changed on August 4th of 2020. But to fully understand what happened, we must go back to September of 2013. A cargo ship carrying 2,750 tons of ammonium nitrate, a chemical compound used in fertilizer, was detained in Beirut when it couldn't pay the Suez Canal toll. To make a long story short, the Lebanese government seized the ship and its cargo. The ammonium nitrate was moved to a warehouse on the dock, where it sat collecting dust until 2020. Then, someone thought it was a good idea to store a batch of fireworks next to the highly explosive chemicals. So, when a fire broke out in the warehouse, it effectively set off a ticking time bomb. A crew of firefighters arrived to fight the blaze and reported hearing a crazy sound. Then, at about 6 p.m., one of two explosions sent a large cloud of smoke into the sky and damaged the entire warehouse. While the first blast was like two tons of TNT, it was only the beginning. 30 seconds later, a second explosion literally shook the entire country and was felt as far as Turkey, Jordan, Israel, and parts of Europe. It was like a small nuke going off in the port of Beirut, between 1,000 and 1,500 tons of TNT. The blast claimed 218 lives and caused about $15 billion in property damage. It certainly didn't help when Lebanon was reeling from other problems. COVID-19 aside, the country was dealing with a crashing economy, a 50% unemployment rate, and a defaulting government. The explosion made international headlines and is something the people of Beirut are still dealing with to this day. The Suez Canal literally makes the world go round, playing a major role in the trade routes between the Middle East, Asia, and Europe. Between 7 and 10 percent of the world's oil moves through the Suez yearly. In fact, about 1 million barrels of oil move through the canal every day. So, when the Ever Given, a 1,300-foot container ship, got stuck for six days, it brought international trade to a standstill. Experts estimated that every hour the ship remained stuck in the canal, it would delay $400 million worth of goods. Furthermore, every day it remained stuck would disrupt another $9 billion worth of goods. So, what happened? On March 23rd, the Ever Given got caught in a sandstorm as it traveled through the Suez Canal. 46 mile per hour winds took control of the ship and turned it sideways, causing it to run aground and block the canal on both ends. The Ever Given was part of a 21 ship convoy en route from Malaysia to the Netherlands. It was the fifth vessel through the canal, forcing 15 others to get stuck behind it. It took six days to get the ship unstuck, but the domino effect it had on the supply chain lasted for months. However, it did cause us to rethink how the global supply lines work, specifically our reliance on just-in-time manufacturing. Michael Safi, a writer for The Guardian, called it a worst-case scenario that many saw coming. So, aside from the cost of the blocked cargo, a settlement with the Egyptian Suez Canal Authority cost the owners and insurers of the Ever Given $550 million. Now, it's no secret that oil still makes the world go round, and with that comes a lot of money for the companies willing to invest in its extraction. History is filled with examples of drilling gone wrong. 
but none have been quite as bad as the Deepwater Horizon. Back in 2010, about 41 miles off the coast of Louisiana, the oil drilling rig Deepwater Horizon was exploring a new prospect when a blowout occurred. Basically, a large pocket of methane gas rushed from the underground well up through the pipes, causing an explosion and fire on the rig. A massive rescue effort quickly ensued to evacuate those on board the rig. 94 crew members were airlifted to safety, but sadly, 11 were never found and are believed to have died in the explosion. After burning for more than a day, the Deepwater Horizon sank on April 22nd. Sadly, the problems only got worse from here. Roughly 8,000 barrels of oil spilled into the sea per day for 87 days. In total, over 210 million gallons spilled out. In July, the well was finally capped. Over a year later, in November of 2012, BP and the U.S. Department of Justice settled federal criminal charges, with BP pleading guilty to 11 counts of manslaughter. The company was also temporarily banned from entering into new contracts with the United States government, among other punishments. For years after this disaster, evidence of the oil was still showing up on shores all over the Gulf. By 2018, cleanup costs, charges, and penalties had cost BP more than $65 billion. To this day, the Deepwater Horizon oil spill is regarded as one of the largest environmental disasters in world history. Throughout much of the 1950s, the US ran several tests on atomic weapons. While many of these occurred in various sites in Nevada, there were many others tested in an even more remote part of the world, Bikini Atoll in the Marshall Islands. Castle Bravo is the name given to the first in a series of high-yield thermonuclear tests under the umbrella of Operation Castle. On March 1st of 1954, the device was detonated. The bomb was estimated to produce a yield of 6 megatons, but the true outcome ended up being far scarier. During the blast, there was an unexpected reaction from the use of lithium-7. This caused the total yield to be more than double what was expected, coming in at 15 megatons. This resulted in an extreme amount of fallout contaminating the surrounding area. The most significant was pulverized surface coral, which fell on residents of Utiric and Ronjalap atolls. Over the course of three days, the military evacuated residents of these islands, but by then, it was too late. Hundreds suffered from radiation sickness. One notable example involved 23 members on a Japanese fishing vessel. They were contaminated from the heavy fallout and suffered from acute radiation syndrome. Once news broke, it led to an international incident over atmospheric thermonuclear testing. But since the blast took place in the ocean, the fallout soon spread over the globe. Traces of radioactive material could be found in places like India and Australia, as well as the United States. In total, the United States Department of Energy found that 253 inhabitants of the islands were impacted by fallout, with many suffering from symptoms like vomiting, alopecia, and skin lesions. Additionally, 23 crew members of the Daigo Fukuryu Maru, a Japanese fishing vessel, were also contaminated by the heavy fallout. According to one source, the United States government has paid a whopping $604 million to the affected atolls and communities, which is over $1 billion when adjusted for inflation. Nuclear power is one of mankind's greatest achievements. This clean and sustainable energy has the ability to power a small city with a single plant and is widely accepted as a great alternative for burning fossil fuels. Still, something this good doesn't come without its detractors, and this was made all too clear in the spring of 1986. In the late evening of Saturday, April 26th of that year, engineers at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant were running a safety test on reactor number four, simulating what would happen in a power failure. Due to a variety of factors ranging from incompetence, ego, power structures, and ultimately a design flaw, things did not go to plan. After about only one minute into the test, the power dropped to a near-zero level, and operators were only able to partially restore power. 
Basically, the nuclear reaction was no longer controlled and could accelerate at an ever-increasing rate. It didn't take long for engineers to notice things spiraling way beyond safe levels, and in keeping with procedure, they pressed an emergency shutdown button. That button ended up being the final nail in the coffin and triggered a powerful explosion. The reactor core was now fully exposed to the outside world. The sudden energy release vaporized the cooling water and resulted in a steam explosion that blew the roof off the reactor. With the reactor core exposed and a large fire burning, radioactive contaminants leaked into the air. The fire continued to release radiation for days until it was finally extinguished on May 4th. Radiation contaminated surrounding areas and even drifted into other countries. Interestingly enough, the Soviet Union tried to hide the disaster from the outside world, and it wasn't until radioactive material had reached Sweden that the true scale of the disaster was made clear. After years of investigations, sometimes hindered by the communist Soviet Union, it was found that there was a significant flaw in the design of the control rods that were inserted into the reactor to slow the reaction. The bottom of each rod was made out of graphite instead of the neutron-absorbing boron carbide. Additionally, the rods were 4.3 feet shorter than they were supposed to be. Because of the graphite tips, neutron-absorbing water was displaced, which actually sped up the reaction. So, unknown to the operators, the control rods did more damage than good. Once all was said and done, the total economic cost of the Chernobyl disaster is estimated to be around $235 billion, making it the costliest mistake in all history. To this day, the area surrounding Chernobyl is uninhabitable. A containment dome was later installed to capture the radioactive particles. It has a lifespan of 100 years, and after that will need to be replaced. Scientists claim that the area will not be safe to live in for at least 20,000 more years. To see another video just like this one, click the link on screen now. With that, thanks for watching, and be sure to tune in next time.